Hey, welcome back to GT Canada. Today, we've got a special announcement. The day that we've all been waiting for with the PlayStation 5 internal storage upgrade has finally come. No, it has not come in the sense that we can finally upgrade our internal storage. No, 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 that's not the case. But thanks to uh, internal leak, we have reason to believe that the firmware update that will enable us to install a drive inside the PlayStation will drop sometime this coming summer. So that means we have to wait from now until summer. Now, when does summer start? Well, not until middle of June, July, August, who knows, maybe the end of summer, maybe the beginning. We don't know for sure. But what we do know is that currently the drive is disabled in the firmware settings. If you stick a drive into your PlayStation 5, it will give you an error saying, hey, you've installed a drive and we can't use that. Please shut the system off, pull that drive out and start it again. So we can't put anything in there. Now, when we're talking about drives, what kind of drive can I install inside my PlayStation 5? Well, Sony has said that they need a certain amount of speed before they will allow it to be used. Exactly how it's going to be locked, we don't know that yet either. But it will need a PCIe 4.0 spec NVMe M.2 drive. Now there's not a lot of drives out there that actually meet the full spec that Sony is looking for, specifically in the speed department. So the internal storage of the PlayStation 5 needs at least 5,500 megabits per second bandwidth. Most NVMe drives on the market right now don't hit over 5,000 megabits per second. Most will be in the three to 4,000 megabit range. So what we don't know, will Sony specifically block any drives that meet that speed? Will they do some sort of a speed test to validate the drive? And if it can't meet those requirements, then it just blocks that drive individually on that kind of a basis. One hunch that I have, so this is, this is not going to be showing up as an external drive or additional storage. What I believe Sony is trying to do is to use the existing 667 gigabytes of storage and add whatever you add to it and use it in tandem. So it would show as all internal storage, even though it resides across two separate drives. So keeping that in mind, the internal drive is very fast. If you have not seen a comparison, I have one up over here that shows the difference in loading times between a number of Call of Duty games on a PlayStation 5 in the internal storage versus PlayStation 4. There is a huge speed difference. Sony wants to maintain that speed difference. So to do that, they need the drive to at least be the minimum spec of what the internal drive already does, which is 5,500 megabits per second. You're probably gonna be looking at a Samsung 980 Pro spec drive, which is PCIe 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD for those of you that beat me up last time. And those drives are expensive. Samsung just came out with the two terabyte drive, which is not very big when you're talking about overall drive space. This pricing on that is almost as much as the whole PlayStation 5 set you back in the first place. If you downgrade a little bit to a one terabyte drive, those are around $300 still. And the theory is once the Sony unlocks that drive, there will be a huge shortage of drives and pricing will start to go up, similar to what you see with the modern day video cards, the GPUs, how there's a total black market for those where pricing is whatever someone's willing to pay. But should you buy a drive now in anticipation of it unlocking, as long as the drive you find definitely is at 5,500 megabits per second rated speed, you should be okay. I am not saying that you will be okay, and it is not confirmed that you will be okay. Some drives do over 6,000 megabit per second. If you find one of those, you should be able to buy that and you'll be even more safe than just going with the 5,500. Any less than that, it is a gamble and it is unlikely to work. I have a feeling that Sony will 
do a speed test of some sort on your drive. They, I don't think they're gonna lock specific brands. I'm sure as soon as you put it in, it'll say we detected a drive. We're gonna just do a real quick check to make sure it meets our minimum specs to make sure you can use it. It will then test read write data. And as long as it meets their minimum requirements, it'll be allowed to run. If it doesn't, it'll lock you out and make you pull the drive out and stick a different one back in. There would not be a workaround for this. Now, some of you are wondering, well, what can I do now? Well, right now there's not a lot you can do. I did make a video over here that talks about what you can do right now as far as adding an external drive. Know that the external drive only holds PlayStation 4 games. You cannot load a PlayStation 5 game on your external USB hard drive or SSD, depending on what you've got. Some great news, as long as you're willing to wait for it to come out, at least now we have a good idea when it's gonna happen rather than sitting here waiting in the dark. If it happens sooner, I will certainly let you know, so make sure you subscribe down below so that you can be notified when that happens. Also, I'd like to specially call out that I think I referred to everything with the correct verbiage and the correct naming in this video versus the last one, which got a lot of hate because I kept referring to it as hard drive. But I understand there are people in the community who really want it to be called by what it is. So the internal PlayStation storage, you have a slot where you can add extra internal storage in the form of an SSD. And if you use the USB port, you can have a hard drive enclosure that takes a standard mechanical drive or takes an SSD or even takes M.2 drive or you can even have, there's ones that even create a storage drive out of just a bunch of SD cards or micro SD cards. Those aren't the best solution and your speed will definitely suffer, but there are a lot of options for external drives. When we're talking about internal storage, we have to keep waiting, unfortunately. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos over here while you wait for our next video to drop. We hope to see you again, but until next time, have a great day.